Good evening, everybody. This is a quicker video to talk about the fact that the online safety bill has now passed and some of the dialectic traps I feel that people are falling into with its passage, and especially with some of the, uh, the news headlines, let's say, we've seen that are uh, very much related, in my mind at least, to the online safety bill. It's very clear there's a one-to-one -one representation here of the intentions of the online safety bill and some of the headlines related to the Russell Brand incident, oh, excuse me, most notably the letter sent by a member of a parliamentary committee. But to start this off, the online safety bill is now effectively UK law. Here's a gov.uk press release saying Britain makes internet safer as online safety bill finished and ready to become law. The online safety bill passed its final parliamentary debate as it is now ready to become law. It's very self-explanatory, and we have gone over a lot of the online safety bill stuff in the past. Um, I put something out on Substack, and I would encourage you, there'll be links down below, there'll be links to the Substack. I've got a big roundup here of all our online safety bill related content, our original stream, along with the two streams we did about Ofcom, because Ofcom and especially its interaction with BitChute are very key parts of the story. I've also made available for free, uh, they're usually paid, the research notes for our streams. We do long form notes, uh, usually quite a, quite an, uh, over 500 words at least, including, you know, excluding links. Our notes are quite extensive and we try and use them as a research base. And I've made the online safety bill and the two Ofcom sets of notes for the research notes section of our uh, Substack available for free as well, so people have access to all the information that goes with the streams. I think that'll be a good resource for people because a lot of people seem very confused as to what the online safety bill actually does. And thankfully, with a bit of foresight, we covered this 11 months ago now, um, when we read out the original white paper and we looked at some of the changes that were happening with the quote-unquote harmful but legal framework. The big thing that seems to interconnect with this is the ongoing, uh, very predictable, really, media-cancelling in quotes of Russell Brown, which I'm kind of neither here nor there on. In fact, I really consider this part of what I refer to as the news feed, <laughs> or, or the news trough, if you will. This is very much news that's been trotted out for people. It's celebrity news. It is, for want of a better term, headline slop. And I think that because you have people like Piers Morgan jumping in on it, you have people like Nigel Farage and GB News, this is really just the other side of the news prol feed for nominally centre-right people. But it's very clear that the letter here sent by Caroline Dynage, Dame Caroline Dynage, ooh, ooh, of the um, Culture, Media and Sport Committee, is the start of a possible campaign to bring alt tech sites like Rumble to heel. And then I know that's been trending, there's a lot of people calling for an apology, there's a lot of people calling for a boycott, and I do not believe, one, that is worthwhile, and two, I believe that is counterproductive in certain ways, because all of the attention that uh, Caroline Dynage has received will be used as justification to combat the online harassment. It's very Gamergate, for want of a better term. It's very harassment farming and people running around being very vocal, being very vociferous, and in some cases quite nasty. As people would be, people are very upset about this. But one, it's not something legally binding, it's merely a request, and two, I believe this is fishing for criticism. And so turning it into the media storm it's become really is what they wanted. It's kind of a predictable cycle of action, reaction, and reframing the reaction to their benefit as the online safety bill takes shape. Um, again, MPs ask if Elon Musk personally intervened on Russell Brand's status on X. This is very much a folding of a narrative based around not only you know, harassment in quotes from Russell Brand, but also the harassment of people who have spoken out and attempted to, in their narrative, remove the income of a sex pest. It's, again, a very, very predictable narrative. Ofcom itself is very relevant in all of this. Now, I would encourage you, again, the links will be down below, the three streams, and we've also got the uh, Substack piece that rounds it all up. 
look into Ofcom's video sharing platform regulation because that is a part of the online safety bill that's already been implemented. And already they're talking about the fact that they can go effectively go in and tell sites what can and can't be in their terms of service. And you might say, well, a lot of these websites are um, American. They're not British based like BitChute was, who was really the test case in this. But if a site wants to work in the UK market, it has to abide by UK rules. That's where you see a lot of German data law stuff come up because Facebook, Twitter et al. have to work within the regulatory framework of Germany and the EU, which is what guides a lot of the content takedown already. Um, I don't think there's really much more to add to that. Again, I would encourage you to go over to the Substack and make sure you are subscribed if you're not already, um, because it is, oh God, there is a lot of things on here. Uh, I don't know, open a draft there. I don't know why it defaults to that, but there's a lot of different stuff on here, a lot of evergreen articles. We try to make stuff that isn't too topical, but this is kind of the big one. This is the online version of like the Equality Act, really. Between the Online Safety Bill, the Equality Act, and a few others, we really have what is almost like a UK Bill of Rights slash Constitution, but in a bad way. <laughs> so as we move, as we move towards the uh, the confluence of all of these things, it'd be good to gain an understanding about them. And quite luckily, we have, I think, some of the best resources out there, especially from a a dissident perspective. So do go and check those out. Um, to do some additional shilling, we are still running our Nomos event. The stale sales are still going. Uh, we're selling out pretty quickly, actually. We've sold more, I believe, more than half the tickets available already. That will be Saturday, the 28th of October in Stirling in Scotland. Uh, we will announce some uh, details about that closer to the time. There will be some special guests. There will be a little bit of speaking. This is more of a social rather than a speaking event. So do go and check that out. And really just don't fall into like the tit-for-tat news slop stuff. Don't get caught up in a celebrity news cycle. Um, I don't believe making Russell Brand the face of UK dissidents is a good idea because uh, he tends to uh, fucky wook up, let's say, <laughs> uh, quite a lot of the time. And he also, as far as I know, doesn't do any of his own research. So you guys have a good evening and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.